All right, welcome back. In the last video, we figured out what the external work was on this little system that we were studying for this flow. And we still have yet to figure out this kinetic energy term and the gravitational potential energy term. So that's what we're going to work on in this video. And in the last video, we found out that the external work for this system was the pressure at point one times volume minus the pressure at point two times volume. So let's actually look at this gravitational potential energy first, because it's just a little simpler. So if we scroll back down to our diagram here, we know that at point one, we have a certain height, y1, which is this value right here. And at point two, we have another y value, which is y2. So if I scroll down here and we start working on the gravitational potential energy, or in other words, this delta u term, well, from physics, we know that the potential energy, which I'll just write here, so the potential energy is equal to m g h where m is the mass g is gravity and h is the height from a datum so if we look back to our system our change in gravitational potential energy is going to be the difference in potential energy of point two and point one so we're going to need m g h over here at point two and m g h for point one we subtract those two terms and then we get this delta u value. So if we know the definition of potential energy right here, then for point two, that is going to be mgh2, which we called y2, minus mgh for point one, and we call that y1. And because we're studying fluid dynamics, we need to have fluid terms inside of this equation. So if you remember our little friend, mass density, which we denoted as rho. Mass density was the mass per unit volume. And if I rewrite this equation, this becomes mass is equal to rho times V. So the mass density times the volume is equal to mass. So I can plug in this term here for both of these M terms in this gravitational potential energy equation. So let's do that. M for point two is just gonna be rho times V, and then we have our gravitational constant times Y2 minus, well, mass again is going to be rho times volume times G times Y1. These volumes are going to be the same at point one and at point two. So I'll just label them as capital V. And the rho value is also going to be the same because it's the same liquid that's flowing inside of our system. Okay, cool, so that's the gravitational potential energy. How about the kinetic energy? Again, from physics, we know that the kinetic energy is equal to something like 1 half mv squared. And this is a lowercase v, and that stands for velocity. So at that point, we have some sort of velocity, we square that, multiply it by mass, divided by two, and we get the kinetic energy. So for our delta k term, which I'll draw here, that is going to be the change in kinetic energy of the difference of 0.2 and 0.1. So we need 1 half m small v uh, 2 squared minus 1 half m v 1 squared. And again, these are lowercase v's, which stand for velocity. So we know if we knew the uh, velocity at point two and at point one, then that's the velocity that we're talking about, the velocity of the fluid flowing through that cross-sectional area. Okay, so let's go back down here and finish this up. So again, just like we did for our gravitational potential energy, we can use this definition of mass density to change this equation a little bit. So this really becomes one half m, which is rho times v, the volume, times lowercase v2 squared, that's the velocity, minus one half m, which is rho times v, times v1 squared. So this is the kinetic energy term in our equation. So we figured out delta k and delta u. So these two equations are these two terms right here. And we also know the external work being done on the system by those external forces. So now we have all three of these pieces for this general statement of energy conservation. 
And so now what we can do is we can combine all of those terms in this equation, and we should be able to derive Bernoulli's equation. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I'm gonna scroll down here, and I'm just going to rewrite those two equations from above down here. So for this general statement of energy conservation, so this equation right here, we have delta K plus delta U is equal to our external work. So our delta K was this term. So I can go ahead and write that there, just like that. So that is our delta K term. And then to that, I'm gonna add our potential energy term, which was delta U, and that was up here. So that turned out to be plus delta U. And this equaled our external work. So our external work was this P1V time, uh, minus P2V. So I'm gonna rewrite that down here. So that was pressure at one times the volume minus pressure at two times the volume. And you might notice that in all of these terms, we have a volume term. So we can cancel out that variable. So V gets canceled out in all terms. And again, this is because the volume at those two points are exactly the same. So I can rewrite this down here in a little bit simpler way. And if I do that, this is what I get. So on the right side here, we have P1, our pressure one minus pressure two. And then we have all of this here on the left. So I'm going to group these terms together by their respective points. So to keep this simple, I'll put point one onto the right side. So on the left side here, it looks like I can add this term and this term so that I can move these to the right. So I'll do that now. And we end up with something like this. So I just added these two terms here from the left over to the right hand side. And on the left hand side, we have all the two terms, so point two. And it looks like I can add pressure two to both sides and I can move that to this side of the equation. And once I do that, then I get this equation right here, which is Bernoulli's equation. So this equation, uh, we just derive from this general statement of energy conservation is exactly Bernoulli's equation. The only difference here is that uh, for, for this equation up here, I had the 0.1 terms on the left uh, and the 0.2 terms on the right. Here, I just have them switched. It does not mean anything. Um, this equation is exactly the same. And this is what we call Bernoulli's equation. So again, this Bernoulli's equation is really a statement of this general statement of, on energy conservation, specifically for fluids. Now, if we get very general with this Bernoulli's equation, you might have seen something like this pressure plus one half rho v squared, and that's the velocity squared, plus rho g y is equal to a constant. And this is really just a general form of Bernoulli's equation. And the only thing this tells us is, well, it's something very important, but it tells us that this term here on the left remains constant in a fluid flow or specifically along a streamline. So in our system that we drew up here, if I had drawn some streamlines here, so I'll just draw three streamlines uh, just to make this simple. So these three streamlines, that Bernoulli's equation, the general form, is saying that if we looked at one of the streamlines, so let's just say the top one for an example, that that term here along this streamline is going to be the same as the term here, 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 and all throughout that streamline. So this value right here remains constant along that streamline. That's all that this Bernoulli's, the general form of Bernoulli's equation is saying. And this is a more specific form of Bernoulli's equation between two different points. So we're going to now use this Bernoulli's equation over a few examples so you understand how this is applied in fluid mechanics. So I'll see you then.